Luke chapter 8, verses 26 to 39. They sailed to the region of the Gerasenes, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the impure spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him, and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into solitary places. Jesus asked him, What is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him, and they begged Jesus repeatedly not to order them in to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs, and he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off and reported this in the town and countryside. And the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. Then all the people of the region of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, because they were overcome with fear. So he got into the boat and left. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over the town how much Jesus had done for him. Luke chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over the town how much Jesus had done for him. This man had experienced incredible healing from Jesus. What does this mean? Well, and or how does this happen? Jesus and his followers decide to travel across the lake. Um, the, this place they go to has a non-Jewish population, and that's probably why they raise a large herd, herd of pigs there. The people that called this man a demon-possessed man. He could not live with them, but lived in the tombs. He had an odd behavior and often shouted in the middle of town. They chained him hand and foot and kept him under guard, but he broke through his chains and very often was driven out of the town by the demons. Jesus asks this man, What is your name? Legion, because many demons have gone into me. A legion is a group of 6,000 soldiers in the Roman army. There are many demons residing in this man. And the Greek word that has been used to describe the impact of these demons on a man means to arrest someone. These many demons have arrested the man and kept him in chains and in the tombs. So today as I talk to you, what arrests you? What chains you? What keeps you in the tombs? As I am pastor, I have had the privilege of chatting and praying with a lot of people. And the plight of this demon-possessed man represents the chains and burdens that we carry with us in our lives. And as I've prayed with people, uh, we've prayed about struggles about health, family, work, finances, you name it. If you are a human being, you often face a struggle in your life. And we sometimes find ourselves chained in our experiences. We find it difficult to get out of these particular chains uh, that have taken hold of us. So Jesus is intentional about coming to this place, about meeting this non-Jewish man, and he is intentional about healing this man. He is on a mission to save him. And Jesus comes to the very dark places of our lives to give us light. Jesus comes to the places where we are in chains 
and liberates us. Jesus comes to save us. So these demons are afraid of Jesus. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, don't torture me. And they begged Jesus not to send them to the abyss, but to the pigs on the hillside. And the pigs rushed into that lake and they drowned. However, the people from the nearby town do not respond positively to Jesus. Those who were raising up these pigs as a means of livelihood are now deprived of their very source of income. When those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off and reported this in the town and countryside. And the people went out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. What will they do? with Jesus. These people from the region ask Jesus to leave because they are overcome with fear. This man is in his right mind, dressed and sitting at Jesus' feet. And so sometimes when Jesus brings healing and salvation into our lives, it disturbs our sense of freedom. He begins the process of of cleaning the mess in our lives. And like the people on this town, we find it difficult to uh, be obedient to him and to let him do his work in us. What will we do with Jesus? Jesus, as I said earlier, intentionally comes to this side of the lake where this man lives. And after getting down from the boat, he meets Legion and Legion falls at his feet. What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, don't torture me. The demons in the man vocalize their fear of Jesus. And notice it is the demons that recognize that Jesus is the Son of the Most High God. We as human beings sometimes reject Jesus, but demons know who the Son of God is. And Jesus commands these evil spirits to get out of the man and go into the pigs. And they are there and those who are there tell the rest of the town how this demon-possessed man has been healed. And the Greek word in Luke 8.36 that's translated as healed or cured can also be translated as saved. Saved. So Jesus not only heals this man, Jesus not only cures this man, Jesus saves this man. Jesus saves this man from his life of torture and pain. And he is indeed grateful to Jesus. And Jesus and his followers must leave now because the crowds are getting restless about uh, uh, Jesus being in their town. So what is the future for this man? This man who has been healed of his life of being in chains. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over the town how much Jesus had done for him. How will this man fare now that Jesus tells him to return home and tell others how much God has done for him? They are used to seeing this man shouting, being undressed and living in the tombs. And now he is a man in his right mind and sitting next to Jesus. And he wants to keep on sitting next to Jesus. However, Jesus says, you go home. Go home and tell your family and friends how much God has done for you. Return home and tell how much God has done for you has a personal meaning for me. Um, I went to a a, a meeting once and it spoke to my heart. Let me explain. I was born in Malaysia and brought up in a Christian family. Both my parents became Christians because of uh, of missionaries. Um, And there was mental illness uh, in the family. My father suffers from mental illness. My late mother was an adult child of an alcoholic. And there was a lot of unhappiness growing up. So I asked the question, how could a God of love allow so much suffering in my life? When I was age 14, I went to a church family camp at a seaside resort. On the first night, the speaker challenged the people to take Christ, Jesus Christ, seriously. And I ask myself these questions. If there is a God, 
uh, who is he? And if there is a God, how do I relate to him? And did this God really send Jesus to die for my sins? Suffering is real, but the question of a saving God is distinct from suffering. Now, suffering will carry on as a question that we all human beings suffer through. So I decided that night that even though my suffering was real, God did really save me through Jesus. I gave my life to Jesus Christ that night. And that night, that speaker also preached on this particular message, this particular passage about Jesus saving this wild man from his demons. And he also said that, well, it's a great family camp, but when we go home, we should remember the words of Jesus. Return home and tell how much God has done for you. Go home and tell your family and friends how much God has done for you. And so when I went home, I felt compelled, I felt uh, empowered to go and tell mom, my mother, my late mother, that I gave my life to Jesus at the camp. And she was so overjoyed and gave me three big kisses. According to Mark, the next time Jesus is in this region, this region where a lot of non-Jewish people live, he gets to preach and feed 4,000 people, Mark chapter 8. How do these 4,000 people know who Jesus is? How do these people, 4,000 people come and hear Jesus if he doesn't live in this non-Jewish place? Why would they want to listen to him? My guess is that this man who had been saved from his life of pain and misery, he went home to his town and the surrounding area and told his family and friends about Jesus. So the, the nearby surrounding uh, t the nearby town and surrounding area heard about how God has saved him through Jesus. He made an impact for Jesus in that region, so much so that when Jesus returned to that region, everyone uh, wanted to listen to Jesus.